Hello, and welcome to Brand Clarity by Visions to Images, where we focus on strategy and business development for entrepreneurs at all different levels through branding and digital marketing techniques. Susie Libertor is the founder and art director of Visions to Images Creative Services, LLC. For the last decade, she has personally been instrumental in bridging gaps between the global digital market and neighborhood locations for some of the biggest brands around. Growth is possible for even a single location with the right professional branding techniques and Susie's signature strategies of Visions to Images. Stand out from your competitors and bring your visions to life while watching your sales skyrocket. Your host for this is Susie Libertor, owner of Visions to Images. All right. Hello, everybody. Today on the podcast, I have Brian Seitz, and he is the president of Accusations at Hillcrest Food Services. And I'm excited to chat with him. He is an in-house attorney. And even though he works with some franchises, there's also other levels that he works with. And it's always important to have a lawyer in your back pocket or several to that extent. <laughs> Um, so I'm excited to kind of chat with him and hear all about the great stuff in the industry. So welcome. Th- uh, thank you, Susie. I really appreciate your time today and, and having me on. One thing that I see so often with our customers, we're a broadliner uh, food distributor. Uh, we, we have a, a little bit of a family office here. So we're buying companies, uh, food yeah. service companies and food manufacturers. One thing that you got to have as a multi-unit operator is a lawyer. Mm-hmm. and. I think so many people miss the mark is that they go looking for an attorney Mm -hmm. when they need one versus, you know, it's an emergency. I got this complaint. I got this legal issue. I got this lease. I got this business I want to buy. And now I'm going to go get an attorney when it should be something like any other vendor that you have that's part of your inner circle is that you, you want to vet them. You want to, you know, be very thoughtful about picking an attorney. Yes. Perfect. I love it. So before we talk about how to find and pick the perfect attorney, tell me how you got started in this. I was a uh, a, a litigator by practice. So I would uh, very traditional lawyer uh, for about a decade in you know, just litigation. So two businesses fighting over a legal dispute, uh, breaking up a business, what have you. So very unfulfilling the hedonistic side of me liked the fight i liked the conflict that was that was fun but like i didn't think my legacy was going to be i, I broke up 50 companies or okay. you know i ca- i caused someone a half a million dollars in legal fees i uh, started down a path of entrepreneurship i started a medical device company with a with a friend of mine and then that company was in the process of selling and and my neighbor approached me to come work for his company and that was hillcrest foods so i've been here for the last um, three plus years, and and we've just been on the acquisition route. So it's it's really great because we get to work with the ultimate entrepreneurs, in my opinion. Restaurant tours are amazing people, great origin stories, and really give back to the community because there's you know there's nothing more intimate than food and and more local than than your local restaurant. Right. I always talk about in my marketing actually about part of giving back and being that local presence. And that's Mm -hmm. huge for a lot of people. I mean, especially during the pandemic, my biggest thing was, and this is kind of where the franchise industry came into place is people were saying, I want to support small businesses, but not large names. Right. And so Mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't realize that they're still a part of the local community. They're still giving back no matter if it's a big name brand or not, like everybody's still doing the best they can do. And we need to recognize those people and how they're giving back. So a lot of times people are missing out on that in their marketing. Like, what are you doing to give back? What are you involved with? Like, tell your story just because you might be a big name doesn't mean you can't share that with your audience. So I love that you talked on that already. Yeah, no, it's um, all business is local. You know, it's no matter who you are at the end of the day, you're serving your local community and and how you do that and how you connect with them is is yeah. so very important. So tell me what somebody should look for when having that attorney. You know, one of my mentors always said that when you're starting a business, you want to have two things. First is a, a great uh, CPA. And the second one is a great attorney. I think that still rings true. Your your inner circle or your advisory council, you know, whatever you want to call them, mm-hmm. your trusted advisors, those are the people you're going to go to with basic you know questions of of business right. and direction and strategy. So you want to ha- make sure that that person is a resource for you and a little less transactional. So I I would say 
people look at these things like, oh, I got to get an attorney for this thing. And it's like, no, you should already have an attorney. And this person should be part of your life uh, and part of your your work life, your business life. So where do, where do we look for uh, a, an attorney? You know, you might not like me for this one, but like the, the, the internet or, yeah. uh, you know, go, going just general like marketing uh, resources for an attorney, I think is the wrong way to go. I would look within your network and really try to find other restaurant tours, other similarly situated businesses of like yours that have good legal counsel and try to get referrals. I think this is an area where this isn't just an HVAC guy, um, which is again, which is still so very important in the restaurant industry when you know the the air conditioning goes out in the, in August. But the, you know, this is someone that is a trusted advisor, and you not only does that person need to be um, intelligent, they also have to mesh with you as far as personality and the way you, that you work. No, I agree with that. And I think that like a lot of lawyers, in my opinion, have, you're always worried about, is it going to cost me this much money? Is, are mm-hmm. they good? Am I going to get the run for my money? Are they going to take advantage of me? Right. Like all of these things, but it's true for any, any industry, honestly, but it seems like more so for lawyers, it can kind of fill people up sometimes. So I think it's important, like you said, to kind of vet them out and really see if they click. I know a lot of times I will definitely use Google and see reviews. However, that's not, that's not the main component. I will absolutely ask for referrals and hear people's stories and hear if they have worked with people in the same industry, because if they don't work in the same industry, then it's going to be harder for them to help me. I, I like what you said there. I think that's so true in the industry as far as that hesitation that I'm gonna if I hire this attorney, it's gonna cost me a ton of money. Right. And I think one way to avoid that is, you know, how much of the legwork are you doing? How much uh, of the uh, whether it's a deal, the due diligence are you doing? Are you bringing them in early enough so they're aware of it and it's not like. I, I got them to sign this lease. We're going to move in October 1st. You need to negotiate all the terms in the next two yeah. weeks. Uh, <laughs> and and you have all this work that needs to be done in such a short period of time. And again, with someone that you don't have a relationship with. So if you can build that relationship, keep them informed and really make sure that they're really fitting your budget. So mm-hmm. a few things, and I'll skip to, to the end here, but I'll go back, is lawyers are expensive. And you can get you can get upside down so quickly, yeah. you know. I I saw this as a, as a practitioner, where you got someone who's doing due diligence on a deal, and they got ten thousand dollars worth of attorney's fees into the deal, and then the deal doesn't go through. Right. So there's zero value add there in the customer's uh, position that this attorney charged me ten thousand dollars and I got nothing out of it. It doesn't mean that the attorney did any less work. The attorney still did the work, but the, the value perception is not there. So one thing that I always tell people is after they hire the attorney is really make sure that you understand what the transaction is. Uh, Are you hiring them a flat fee? Is it hourly? Is it capped? Is it contingency? How many hours are they putting into it? Is there a retainer required? Uh, What are the rates for everyone working on the matter? Because if you have an associate at $250 an hour, and then you got a senior uh, partner at $600 an hour, it's like, well, who's being deployed to handle my matter? And then, you know, look at how can you compensate that person? You know, are you giving back referrals? Uh, are they sending opportunities your way with catering and, and maybe business opportunities? And, you know, is there an opportunity to do some trade? So can you trade catering for some billable hours? Those are some of the things that you look at as sure. a way to lessen the cost, but really provide that that value. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, you touched on a lot of different points and it's interesting to hear that. What should somebody look for? I mean, we talked a little bit about it, but like, what would somebody really need to look for if they wanted to hire somebody right away? One thing I always say is look for a personality fit and really understand that 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 is someone that you're going to be dealing with and that you can like spending time with. Uh, I know as a profession, uh, lawyers are probably not the most likable people, uh, but I, I mean, you can definitely find one that that you can work with. And then really, you know, their experience, how many years have they been practicing? Are the the typical clients in industry, the same size as yours. So, you know, you can find an amazing attorney who's been practicing for 30 years, but he's going to price you out of your five unit, you know, restaurant group. So how do you find someone that is at the point in their career where you are an important client, but that the person is not so big 
they're not going to give you the time or you're going to want to pay the money to have someone of that caliber on your matters. Makes sense. Uh, some other things that uh, I always tell people to look for is what is their primary area of focus? Uh, you know, if they're a contract, uh, you know, they're dealing with franchise agreements, they're dealing with leases all day long. That's great. Uh, but also, do they have a network or a firm that they're able to refer you out to if you have a wage and hour issue, if you have uh, a trademark issue? Every area of the law, much like other areas of business, there's still specializations. And you're going to really want to make sure that that person has a full understanding of it and that you're not paying for them to get up to speed. And a good attorney will refer you out to other people who are better fitted to handle specific legal matters. Yeah, I think that's important, right? I mean, I feel like sometimes when I've dealt with lawyers, some of them I can get bad vibes from if I don't think that they're going to be the right person and they just want your money, right? Instead, sometimes mm -hmm. they can refer you. They're like, this isn't a good case for me, but I know somebody who can. Like, That is a huge, huge deal for um, any business owner because they're not wasting time and money. And so I appreciate those kinds of things for sure. You know, Having that network and that referral partnership is amazing. Yeah. And that, that usually sh uh, shows a more sophisticated lawyer or firm that understands, hey, this is what we do well. We're, right. We play well within the community and make sure that we're sending cases and matters to other people and then they're sending them back. So it, again, it's a lot easier to get someone who's done a hundred leases you know, in the last two months versus right. the guy who's done three and sure. knows the terms. Kind of a great point to segue there is this person can be a great trusted advisor because they are seeing so many transactions and so many reps that maybe as a business owner, if you have five units of a, of a franchise or you know two restaurants or what have you, that they're seeing a hundred leases in the last six months and you're only seeing yours every three years or every five years. So they know the terms, they know what's negotiable, they know what the different landlords are able to push back on and, and what deals that uh, can be done. So that can save you tens of thousands of dollars and really make their hourly rate look nominal, even if they're charging three, 400 bucks an hour. Hey there, I want to interrupt this episode with a quick message. If you're listening to this podcast episode and want to learn about branding your franchise or small business, then go to brandingbridge.com. That's branding-bridge.com. So I know you said like, it's better to find an attorney before you're like, oh my gosh, I need one now. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you, what kind of path do you suggest they go on? Right. So when, if they're just starting the business, like they should definitely have one. Right. Yeah, no, it, you know, for your original incorporation documents and stuff like that, um, when you're initially starting the business, uh, you know, and accountants will typically help with, with some of the, the filings, you know, you want to find someone that you can grow with, that you can uh, feel comfortable with on the expense side, especially early on. So if you're looking at starting up a business, you know, find a, a law firm that caters towards entrepreneurs and has a pricing structure that that is acceptable, you know, because again, you don't want to hurt anybody either. Like if, if you have a thousand dollars to spend to get things up and running and get trademarks and, you know, you want a, a law firm that is able to accept that and, and not charge you $7,000 for, you know, some simple task. Yeah. Awesome. So what kind of advice would you give somebody um, if they were just starting off in the entrepreneur world, what kind of advice would you give them? You know, I would say find a, a lawyer that wants to go on the journey with you. And then really it's your job to be hands-on and really involved. A lawyer, you know, charges by their time. So mm -hmm. if you want them to work your case and be reasonable, make it super easy for that lawyer to work your, to work your matter, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, a lease review or it's a, a, a partnership agreement between you and somebody else, you are required to participate, you know, be involved uh, in the, in all projects, hands-on, understand how long it will take, understand what information they'll need and how many times you'll need to meet. So you really want to immerse yourself in the matter if you want to get it done quickly. And if you want to get it done cost-effectively. Now, if you're super rich and, and you have a team of lawyers, like, Hey, that's more power to you. But at the end of the day, uh, these things aren't done in a vacuum. Uh, it's not like it's an HVAC system uh, and you just say, hey, go to my second location and, and fix it. Like this, you're going to need a lot of interaction because of the intimate nature of the law. Gotcha. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. That's all the questions that I have and I will share your bio and your links. And oh, real quick, you do have a podcast as well. So tell us real quick about that. 
Yeah, no, we have uh, Restaurant Topia. Uh, it's a podcast for uh, local independents. If you need advice, business advice or um, marketing advice, we really cater towards local independents that uh, you know maybe have one unit, maybe have fifty units, but definitely are serving their community and and trying to you know get better at the game. It's difficult out there with pricing increases and, oh and labor increases. It is definitely a tough business to be in right now. It's insane. Yes. Yeah. The restaurant industry is, is kudos to them because, oh my goodness, I don't know how they could have made it through so much of this. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming on and um, we will share those links. Awesome. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you everybody for listening in on today's brand clarity episode with Susie Libertor. Two things. First and foremost, please, if you liked this episode, please subscribe and leave some positive reviews. Also, don't forget to sign up for Stop Sending Your Customers to the competition and get my insider secrets to compelling branding that converts. You can find that at branding-bridge.com. It's a free workbook for you to check out right now all of the branding techniques and strategies that I use for my paying clients.